Okay, hi guys. So today is day 31 of Road to Grandmaster. Okay, so we're gonna learning the same topic. But before before um the video start, I'd like to um answer the question, answer the puzzle yesterday. So this is the first one. Okay, so the correct correct move is push base three. And after f5, d5 good move. Well, the idea of d5 is to prevent the knight occupied the d5 square. Now, the move cannot be transposed by first d5 because now after takes, now black gets the pass, pass pawn. Alright, so let's say you go some. Now, let's say now you go bishop a3, that's d4. Okay, and a5, d3. You have to stop the pawn, knight e7. If you take, then to push. Okay, and then the knight is gonna go to d5. If you go, let's say king g2, okay, f5, and the, the knight is gonna go to d5 anyway. Right, the idea is to go b6 or c7 to stop the pass one. Alright, so um, bishop a3 is the best move here, and now f5. The idea is to go knight f6, knight d5. You have to play the move d5. Takes and now a5, knight f6, a6, knight e8, trying to start with knight c7. Now, okay, now if you go knight d7, trying to go knight b6, you have this brilliant move bishop c5, stopping knight b6. If he takes, okay, a7 and um, a8, queen is unstoppable, so we win. If you go knight e8, we play the same idea. Prevent knight c7 with the move bishop d6. Brilliant move. Knight takes d6, a7, and there's, there's, there's no way to stop a8 queen, so white is winning. Alright, that's the first. That's the first one. Um, now let's look at the second. Second one. Okay, here is it. Okay, here it is. So, um, this position is white to play. So the best move, okay, is bishop d3. Good move. So this is the idea we saw just now. Bishop d3. Now the threat is bishop d4. Right. Basically, trap the knight or e6, and then push the pawn. Okay, you might wonder why e6 doesn't work because of knight e2 check and g2 check. Knight g3 followed by knight f5. So bishop d3 is very important to stop knight e2. Check. Now if you take this and e6, there's no way to stop the pawn from promote to a queen. So you have to stop the pawn with king b7, bishop d4. Now we trap the knight. Um, but the fight is still not end. Um, still not yet the end because black still fighting okay so king b6 king g2 and king c5 attack your bishop now e6 will be a blunder sorry oh uh, yeah will be a um, very terrible blunder because the, there's king d6 and the knight can get out with the move knight d3 or knight e2 right if you take then we take your pawn so the bishop's overloaded Oh yeah, overload of oh, two diagonal. So you have to play in this position. King takes g3, and after he takes, okay, now you push, and now you are completely winning. Now the last trick, knight e2 check. The only move is king h2. Prevent any check. Obviously, king f3. There's knight d4 check. King g4. Okay, king king g2. There's knight f4. King f2. Uh, okay, king h3 doesn't work obviously. King h4, there's knight f4 and knight g6. So king h2 is the best move. King f2, I believe. There is some. Um, nice. 
Okay, so King S2 and King G4 basically is the same, I think. Now, black can save the game with knight c3, e7, knight e4. So if you king on s2, knight e4 is with check. So then, yeah, the problem is now if you promote to a queen and check, you lose the queen. Alright, so you have to um, promote to a. Oh, oh, okay, sorry, not knight e4, it's not, okay, it's a move knight d5, uh, but I think knight e4 works also, so knight e5, knight, knight d5 is more straight away, just attack the pawn, and if you queen, then knight f6, okay, if you promote to a knight, then obviously it, it could be a draw, alright, so, yes, so, okay, so I'll, I'll do a, in quick replay, so bishop d3, prevent knight e2, bishop d4 trap the knight, king g2 king takes, and now you just push the pawn, and now the move is king h2, and there's no way to stop e7, e8 queen, there's no check this time, checks and fork the king and the queen, no way, okay, and that's how you, you win the game. Okay, so now let's um, go to our main topic. So today's topic is um, fixing a pawn, right, fixing a pawn. Okay, let's look at this example. Okay, so in this position, you have a pass pawn, right, so um, Wait, give me a second. So, okay, in this solution, the way to win is bring your king to the queen side. Sorry, bring uh, bring your king to the queen side, and then okay, try try to push the pass on something. However, this doesn't work because black can bring his king to the center. Alright, for example, um, if you play king f two in this position, then g six. Right, the idea of g6 is to prevent king e6, bishop f8. So you play g6, good move. Um, king e2, g, uh, king e6, king d3, king d5, and position is equal. There's no way to win. Now you, e6 also doesn't work because of king e6, bishop f8. Now h5. Take 6, king g2, okay. King d7, knight c4. Um, again, the game is still going to be a draw. So in this position, okay, so one of the most important important methods of converting one's advantage in endgame, right, and actually not just in endgame, is the principle of two weaknesses. Right? Sometimes it is impossible to win by working only only on um, one part of the board. Right? In such cases the attacking side strikes to create a second weakness in the enemy camp or to exploit one which already exists by attacking this second weakness and then if necessary returning to attack th the first weakness so the attacker succeeds in breaking down and eventually overcoming the opponent's resistance all right so in this position okay so don't forget the topic today fixing the pawn right or another way to say it fixing the weakness so here's the weakness all right first of all you have a pass pawn so this is considered a weakness for your opponent right in the queen side so principle of two weaknesses we use the concept of pri um, principle of two weaknesses we want to create another weakness on another another side so this is the two weaknesses so we fix it. Now we play h4. Good move. Um, there is some idea with like h5, fix the pawn on the dot square, and then the king can't move because the bishop f8. So let's say play g6. Now h6. 
cage fight good move right an excellent positional move now the vulnerable h6 pawn prevent black king um, going towards the center and then um, black just gonna meet the advance of white king to the, the queen side so um, h5 good move take 6 king f6 b6 good move knight b7 bishop f8 king g5 bishop b7 okay you take our pawn i take your e5 pawn now it's true that the h5 pawn is gone but now the king must defend another vulnerable pawn the one at f4 all right so for now white king cannot penetrate the king side for example king h3 because like knight a5 um bishop d6 knight b7 bishop b7 check king h5 and it's actually equal because it, uh, i guess th they can just wait here with the knight here if you play bishop b4 okay the knight d8 so you still you still can't like do do something here so the move here is actually king f2 king f2 like pretend that uh, uh, we want to go to the queen side uh, actually this is just a waiting move now king f5 bishop g7 h5 and now the h after h5 there's not a weakness here like okay i mean this is already a weakness but on h5 it's more easily to more easy to uh to exploit it right easier to exploit it. so let's say you, you, you're trying to defend it with king g5 okay now we go king e2 all right so yeah well i guess we can also do something like this maybe okay there's some knight check you know but okay maybe king to something like that la, something like that all right so um the h pawn must be advanced anyway so after h5 white change his plan and decide to outcome on the king side now king b2 good move knight c5 uh, basically the knight is tied out to defend this pawn la, so they can just wait here they can never defend the king side it is tied out because there's this possible one. so knight c5 bishop f8 uh, king h3 king g5 bishop e7 so now we're just trying to use Zhuang, right the first topic we talk about in the bishop vs knight right chapter so king h4 and in solution black resign because black king cannot defend both h f4 and h5 pawn at the same time and there's like i said no help no help um from the knight either right because of the past one so yeah meanwhile what what bishop is still very active so black resign okay so that's how whites win the game by fixing the weakness i have to um, go through another example okay here it is so okay so <laughs> in this solution is quite to play okay now in this case black's king was forced to defend its pawn all right and then the knight have to defend the, the queen side pawn now in order to let white's king break into the enemy came enemy camp white uses the standard techniques of um like some some kind of zugzwang zugzwang thing okay let's see how it how it do, do it so g4 good move so okay, so g4 like at first you look at it it seems like white because it's a weakness why why you want to trade it but you ha have to do it to, to break through the position to make progress otherwise you have nothing here otherwise you have nothing here so g4 good move take 6 and now you try and play a zugzwang 
Okay, so it's quite instructive. So um, let me show you. So king g6, king g3, king g5. Um, after sorry, after king g5. Okay, after f5, stake stakes and king f4. Well, it's just winning because you if you take stakes, then the king go to the queen side and take the, take all the pawns. King g5 have to play. Now we just wait because the knight can't move. Our bishop can move, right? So that's how we 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 play. We we can achieve the the zug zhuang. So, but the first the first um task is to to first um let like kick kick his king back. Right, that's the first task. So, force his king back last. So, um, king h6. Right, e5 does not help because we simply play king, g king g3, king h4. And now, okay, just a waiting move. g5 could move, stake stakes. Now, f5, we just take stakes and play king h5, g6. And we're winning. So, f5, um, f takes g5, takes. And then, we attack the pawn and king g4. We get the opposition, and white is just winning. You can't you, you can't move the knight. If you move the king, okay, we we kick um we our king go into your position. King go here. We go here. King go here. We go here. Alright, so king h6 will split in the game. And now king f4. King g6. E5 can move. Alright. Alright to to because. We have to break this pawn to, to let our king uh, go into black position. So e5, takes takes. Now f5, we just takes and play e6, and we're just winning. So takes takes. King f7, bishop c7. Um, king f6, g5, king g4. A waiting move, and now this position black resigns because black is in Zugzwang, and will find himself in Zugzwang over and over again. Since his knight is tied to the defense of the d6 pawn, right, and can yeah, the knight can basically never move. So, for example, let's just say you play e5 in this position. Okay, just wait. Right, we have waiting move. Uh, meanwhile, black does not because knight no move, king have no move because it, the king is in opposition. The only move to, to move the pawn. Okay, you can move it. We just take it. Right, bishop d8 also good here, but okay, just take the pawn, and then king e4, king d5, king c6, then take all the pawn on the queen side. Okay, so uh, e5 doesn't work. Let's say you play king f7. Okay, we just keep go into your position with our king, king g7, c7, king h7. If e5, okay, we just go king king g4, and it's the same thing actually. G6, King G5, and we get the opposition again. And again, Black has no move. Okay, the only move is the pawn. Okay, we just can simply play King F5. So there's no hope. All right, here's in Zugzwang, so um, White wins, and that's when after Bishop D6, Black resigns. So a very good example of right, like principle of two weakness and the combine of fixing the pawn principle of two weakness and Zugzwang. Very nice. Okay, now let's see some tragic comedy. So, uh, okay, so in this position, it's actually happened in a real game. So, uh, in this position, it's white to play. So, what is the best move? So, the best move is just exactly same move as the, the example before and the same technique also h4 we want to fixing the weakness on h5 right which is on light square we have a light square bishop so we can attack it however in the game king d5 was played and the position became draw right because if white king um go like go to a7 and then black would put his king on c7 and it would be some, some kind of stalemate and a g pawn 
Okay, let's say you're trying to trying to trying to create a passive pawn here. There's a knight simply defending it. So the best move for black, right? Guess it. What is the best move for black? H4, good move. So yeah, so H4 is the good, the winning move here to, to fixing the pawn. Now what missed it? So there's no chance for him to do it again. H4, good move for black pieces. Yeah, and then it becomes draw. So, um, if you play some some g3, you know the simplest way. Black can just exchange the pawn, and then put his king on b8, and then sacrifice the knight for the pawn, and it would just be a um um theoretical draw end game. Theoretical draw end game. Yeah. Okay, so um, the game goes like this: e2, knight f8, king e4, king c5, king g5, king f6, king c4, knight g6, and the game and ended in a draw. All right, <coughs> so that's is the end game for today. So I wanna add something in in this video. So now fixing a weakness can not only like happen in a middle game that's uh, right not only can happen in the end game it actually can happen in the middle game also so now we're gonna look at some some example right some example of it so um the resource okay now we're gonna look at two games right the game was played by stockfish versus the Mac nine, the Mac nine. Okay, so stockfish. The rating of stockfish is three six five zero. The rating of the Mac nine is um, four nine. Okay, nine 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 nine. Okay, so um, the the total resource is take from Gotham Chess YouTube video. The title is Can Three Magnus Carlson Beat Stockfish? Alright, let's see the game. So, uh, if any details, you can watch Gotham video, obviously. So, I just want to um, focus on the end game part. So, so that's not our main topic. Okay, so in this vision, yeah, in this vision, H4 is played. Good move. Like the, the actually, the same move last. Right now, the idea is trying to play. I guess F H five after takes some F five idea. So this is my my guess. So H five was play, and now look at this. White pieces immediately undermine the pawn with the move F five, and then there's a, there's the one weakness, isolated weak pawn here, and also weakness. Takes to take three four king seven, and now he attack it. Play the move b4 and rook d8, a mistake. This move is a mistake. He doesn't take six. Now, principle of two weaknesses and fixing the weakness. So, the move is a5. Just fix, completely fix the pawn like this. So, knight e6, king f2, bishop f3, knight e4. Now, try and attack like this. So basically, force white to black to take it, and now we got a bishop versus knight in game. King f6, bishop f3, king e3. Now, okay, we take one pawn. Knight d5. Okay, for for example, if you play some some move like knight e6, some, something like this, lah. Okay, I, I just give it an example. There's even some idea like this, and push the pawn. Okay, so okay, in the game, we simply have two pass pawns. And then you just you just push the pass pawn, just completely winning. King e2, okay, nice e5, bishop f7, and two pass two pass pawn is just too much. Right. Black's pass pawn is separate, our pass pawn is connected. Okay, so king d6, and then he went to take the pawn on the queen side, take six. Okay, that's how we win the game. Okay, 
Okay, so first move is page 4, provoke page 5, and now there's one weakness. And now black make a mistake with rook d8, and we simply play take 6, and now the good move a5, fixing the pawn. And then start to attacking it. Alright, and then, okay, force black to, to take it, and we have a bishop knight endgame. Okay, black decided for some, okay, because of king e4 and king takes e5 is unstoppable, so black decided to stop this idea, but give up the, that pawn. And then we have two pass pawn, and then th they just push it, forces the king to defending it, and then bring our king to take the pawn. And that's how you win the game. That's the first game. Well, the second game... Um, which is very nice, okay. So that's this is the game, okay. So uh okay. I just wanna talk about one move, one very nice move. So in this solution before white played the move H five, he played H H five. Now there's a long term weakness here. It, yeah, it, it is middle game right now, but it's a long term weakness. He knows he's gonna trade pieces and then go into end game. Black pieces, okay? Now, white pieces is the Mac 9 and black pieces is Dogfish 16. Now, also, there's some idea like stopping 9 H5, so H5 in this position. And how's the game go? Like, because of the move H5. And 20 moves later, he win the pawn like this. Right, now it's 45 moves, and at move 24, he play h5. And 20 moves later, the h pawn. Um, it's gone. White's H1 is gone. Uh, let me find the move. I couldn't find the move. Yeah, in this solution. And how we win the game? Okay, just push the pass one. Okay, and for any, like, like I say, so for any these two, feel free to watch Gautam chess video. He's basically the most famous chess YouTuber. Right. Okay, the rest of the game is basically easy. Alright. So there's also many amazing ideas by Stockfish. Sorry, sorry, not by Alpha Zero. All right, some H4, H5, H6 idea. Now I won't analyze all today, so I, that's all for today. I will analyze them in the future if there has, um, if I, have, if there's a chance. So um, that's all for today. All right, thanks for watching. And hope you guys enjoy and learn something. So take care.